Hi, my name is Chris Delaney, the product owner for Esri Law Enforcement Solutions, and this is a short video on selecting data using the Crime Analysis Solution. The Crime Analysis Solution provides four options for selections that can be used by themselves or together to create robust selection options for your data. In this example, I'm going to be using some crimes data from Naperville, Illinois. That's an example to show some of the capabilities of the selection capabilities available in the crime analysis solution. The first option available to you in the ribbon is the select tool. The select tool enables you a number of standard geographic selections to make. For example, I can grab a lasso and then just draw whatever area I want to make a selection. Alternatively, I could draw a polygon or a circle, a line or a rectangle. To draw a polygon, I click on where I want the corners of the polygon to be, and then double click to complete the polygon. Next, let's take a look at a select by attributes query. Select by attributes are generally any of the data that is within your layer. And so you can think about this as the what of the data uh, in your layer. So I'm going to select the layer that I want to select from my crimes layer. I'm going to be making a new selection, or I could be picking to add from a current selection. And I'll show that in just a minute. And then I'm going to write one or more expressions. Now the expression that I'm going to write is for violent crime. So in this case, I'm interested in grabbing the UCR description is equal to aggravated assault. And then I'll add another clause and say, and UCR description is equal to robbery. And UCR description is equal to rape. And and UCR description is equal to, I don't think I have any other, it is criminal homicide. So that's the way I could build that simple statement. Alternatively, I have the ability in a single query, in a single expression, I, I should say, to complete this uh, selection. By doing changing the operator from is equal to, to includes the values. And then in my field list, I, in my pick list, I'm going to get checkboxes that enable me to pick as many values as I want. So I could select rape, robbery, and criminal homicide here. <clears throat> so that simplifies the uh, the expression for you. I also have you if you build a successful ex expression and you can validate it to double check that it's correct. I can then save this to my computer and then reuse it for a later date. This becomes particularly handy as you have more complicated solution er, expressions. So I'm going to apply this expression, and all of my selected crimes now show up on my map in light blue. So I'll press OK. Now I'm going to be interested in limiting my selection based on a where. And so based on the where, I'm to do that, I'm going to use a select by location tool. The select by location tool enables me a couple of different options. Uh, first, I'm going to select the layer that I want to select from, my crimes layer. The relationship I want is that any uh, crimes that intersect the location area that I'm interested in. Um, but I have a number of other ge geometric relationships that I could pick from. For selecting features, I have two options. I can either pick a layer that exists in my data set already. So I could go to a particular um, layer that I have, maybe my precincts layer, and press OK. Alternatively, I actually don't want to use that. I can draw something on the fly. So I could draw, uh, just like I did with the select tool, a polygon, a line, a point. So in this example, I'm going to select points. It's going to give me the ability to, on the fly, pick a location. So I'm going to drop a point. And then I can set a buffer around that point of a search distance. So I'm going to select one mile around that point. And then for selection type, I want to select a subset from the current selection. So what that means is of the violent crimes that I already have selected in my layer, I now want to select only the violent crimes that are within the one mile radius of this point that I've defined. So when I press apply, now you can see that the selected options 
are quite a bit lower uh, and reflect that one mile radius around the point that I defined. The last tool that I want to show is the Select Layer by Date and Time tool. This is a tool that was built specifically for the crime analysis solution to make date-based selections easier to work with for crime analysts. Uh, it behaves the same way generally, so I can pick the input layer that I'm interested in, my crimes layer. I can again select a subset from the current selection. I can have it respond to either a single time field or a time range. So if you have a date from and a date to field, you can use this. I'm going to pick my date field, which would be the reported date. And then I have a variety of different selection options. Under date, I can pick a single range. So that could be a start and end date that I would define using a calendar picker. I can pick a single date using a calendar picker. I can select anything in the last in a certain time range so let's say i want anything in the last 60 days let me move this out so i can see the bottom of it and so if i run this this is selecting from the layer the crime selections that I had already selected, and it is providing me only the last 60 days of crimes. So when I open up this attribute table, the selection result is ultimately showing me, if I pick the selected button, the two records that were violent crimes, so I can validate that. There's my UCR description. There's my violent crimes that were within a mile of the location that I picked, that little that icon right there, and that are within the last, there it is, reported date. They're within the last 60 days. Now there's another option here. I'm going to clear this selection out. And there's another selection here that uh, is interesting to look at. And so the, the best way to sort of describe this is I'm going to run this selection again, just the last 60 days of crime. So this is going to grab all crimes because it's, it's uh, this is actually selecting a subset from the current selection. I, let me change that to new selection. This is going to run all crimes that occurred in the last 60 days. And so I can see these right here, 3, 323. This is reported data sorted descending. So it runs from 323, and the oldest record is 123. Now what I can do in this date selection type field is also change it to comparative time pe period. So what this is going to do is run a, a, create a selection for the 60 days prior to the current 60 days. So this can be really helpful when you're running CompStat reports and you need to look at the current 60 days versus the previous 60 days. The comparative time period selection helps you with the pre previous 60 days. And so now when I look at the data that has been selected, I can see that the uh, reported date uh, start for the selection is 122, and that goes back to 1-2. So that is the 60 days before the most recent 60 days. So I could then use that in something like the summarize percent change tool to be able to make comparisons. The, let me clear this out again. The time selection tool also gives you the ability to select by time ranges. And I also have the ability to um, make day of week selections, month selections, and even year selections. So let's say I am interested in all of the summertime weekend violent crimes. I can select days of week are Saturday, Sunday, and maybe we want to add Friday. And then I'm going to grab June, July, and August. And then I'm going to run this selection. And that's going to give me back all violent crimes that happen on the weekend in the summertime. So as you can see, it makes selecting 
based on parts of a date much, much easier. And because you have this selection type option that enables you to select subsets from the current selection, you can combine these with attribute selections in order to make rich queries of your data. <clears throat> Now, one thing that is relatively new to ArcGIS Pro uh, that I want to show before I finish up this video is in addition to making selections, and once you have a selection, you've got kind of two options. First, you can um, choose to export your selected data as its own uh, feature class in a geodatabase. To do that, you would right click, you'd go to data, and you'd go to export features, and that would create a new standalone feature class, so a new layer in your data. Alternatively, when you click on the layer that has the selection in it in your contents pane, and you come up to the crime analysis ribbon, you'll see a button in the selection group called layer from selection. What this will do is make a, a temporary layer that just includes the selected features. So I'm going to press this, and now you'll see what this looks like. I'm going to turn off the I'm going to turn both of these layers off. Here's the crimes layer. You can still see the selected features are in light blue. The non-selected features are in dark blue. And then the crime selection layer, now you can see it is just the selected features. They don't show as being selected. They're just a standalone layer. Now, you won't find this layer in your geodatabase anywhere. It's a temporary layer. It only lives in the project for the purposes of the project. So um, you can use it when running various geoprocessing tools. It's a great way to organize your data. Uh, and um, it behaves as if it's a normal, regular layer. It just does not, it's not its own standalone layer um, in your data. So that's a look at these selection tools that are available in uh, the crime analysis solution. Uh, that are uh, that are available for you to use either individually or in tandem to build and ask uh, rich, nested, complicated questions of your data. Thanks for watching this video. Mm -hmm.